All right, everybody. Happy June 1st. We are mere hours, hours away from the launch of Diablo. We are exactly, at least in my time, central time, 12, 18 hours from launch, 18 hours for everybody until we get into it by the time I posted this video. Anyway, there was a lot of drama today. Joseph Piora, uh, Pepiora over at uh, Blizzard stirred up some controversy around uh, what was going on as far as level goes. And then Wowhead uh, li listed some unofficial pat note, patch notes. So let's dive in real quick. And as always, if you like the content I'm producing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. So that way I get bumped up in the algorithm uh, and let's dive into it real quick here. So with that, let me just move this over here. So I stop looking off to my uh, left. Anyway, guys, you can see here that uh, Joseph uh, today on May 30th. So uh, two days ago, uh, he said the service land build was not 0.9, but actually a version of our day one build. There will be very few changes between this build and the one. Sorry for the confusion. And then he was replying to right here. It will represent 1.0 of D4 up from 0.9. We had in place uh, with that. That was in response to a question that uh, Binio. I'm terrible with names, guys. I apologize. Uh, not asking for specific, but assuming day one patch content at all. And uh, that is went uh, on to create all types of drama the last couple of days. And then Wowhead and some folks started comparing what the skills were in the uh, server slam to what we saw in all of the data mine yesterday. And here, let's dive into those unofficial patch notes. Let me just zoom in a little bit here, make it a little bit easier to see. Actually, let me get my big ass head out of the way. So that way, you know, we can actually see what's going on. Uh, so we documented... Changes made to skills, talents, passive aspects, and more for all the classes in patch 1.0.2 of Diablo's release client, which is available for preload. And again, we are, oh, guys, we're right there. We are right there. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So general legendary aspects, barbarian, legendary aspects, druid, rogue skills and talents, necromancers, and then some of the elixirs got uh, updated or nerfed or buffed or whatever. Let's read and find out together. So accelerating aspect, critical strikes with core skills, increase your attack speed by 15 to 25% for five seconds. So that got a buff. That's a pretty good one. This is a general aspect for everybody. So that's pretty, uh, pretty great. Then Barbarian Legendary Aspects, Aspects of the Ancestral Echoes, Lucky Hit, While Call of the Ancients is on your action bar, damaging enemies with Leap, Upheaval, or Whirlwind have up to a 40 to 50% chance to summon an Ancient to perform the same skill. So it looks like they removed the can only happen once every five seconds and has up to a 40 to 50% chance. So that's pretty good, almost a 50% chance to call an ancient to perform the exact same skill. That's a big buff, if you ask me. Uh, then you got Druid Cataclysm. Lucky hit chance went from 62 to 72, and a massive storm follows you now for 10 seconds, as opposed to up from eight. No other changes. Petrify, in case all near I enemies in stone, stunning them for three and three quarter seconds. So that got a buff against bosses. Critical strike damage and bonus increases to 50%, and its duration is increased to seven and a half seconds. So Petrify got a buff. Grizzly Rage shapeshift into a dire werebear for 12 seconds. Okay, so again, Grizzly Rage got a buff. And then Lacerate shapeshift into a werewolf become immune and quickly dash 12 times between enemies in the area, dealing up to 500% damage. So Lacerate got a giant buff um, if you played that at all in uh, the service line. Then we got Rogues, Rogue Nation Unite. Uh, we got a damage increase to dash. Dash forward and slash enemies for up to 36% damage. So that's really good. If you go check out any of my build videos, dash is a pretty uh, instrumental thing there. There's a couple of uh, a couple of end game builds I'm playing with. I'm not going to post anything about them until I actually get to the end game uh, and get to try them. Um, if you want to check it out, you can go check out um, uh, Max Roll. You can go check out um, you know Veiled Shot, or Abby Hour, any of the content creators that have actually been able to play uh, end game uh, and get in there uh, and see uh, what... Uh, they think about it. Um, the Max Roll guys have a couple of really good end game builds uh, that I'm interested to try out and uh, let you know what I think of there. Uh, Necromancer, uh, skills and talents. Let's see, Gollum. Uh, Gollum with X Life that attacks for 21% damage. Okay, cool. The Gollum. The Gollum absorbs 15% of damage you would take and recovers life when attacking. So that's good um, because the Gollum... Uh, the shit, the corpse shed skill. I didn't really like too much from uh, the beta when I played Necro uh, for a little bit. Active 
Uh, your golem becomes unstoppable uh, and drains blood from enemies in the area, dealing 40% of damage and healing 4% of its life for each enemy drained. Damage, damage and healing receiving are tripled if only one enemy is drained. When your golem redies, it spawns at respawns after 20 seconds. So that's a pretty good buff on the active for the golem. And then we got a bunch of elixirs. Looks like all of the elixirs got uh, kind of nerfed a little bit, right? Increases critical strike chance. So from 4% to 2%. Down 10% for the week. Precision. Yeah, it looks like all the elixirs got dropped a little bit. So all in all, really good updates. Still, um, you know, again, guys, we are just mere 18 hours away uh, from this. Anyway, if you enjoy uh, the content that I've been putting out lately, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give me a like and let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, we will see you in Sanctuary tomorrow night. Could not be more excited uh, for this to happen.